Where do we start with England and this debacle? <laughs> well, that was the worst performance I have ever seen from an England team. Ever. The long, long wait is over. A Wembley roar to hail England's history makers. Hello and welcome to the Borough Breakdown podcast, the road to Berlin and the road does not stop in Gelsenkirchen. England, by the skin of their teeth, book their place into the quarterfinals of Euro 2024 and its destination, Dusseldorf, next. I'm joined by Matt and Tom for this one and there's only one place to start really, the moment of the game and arguably the moment of England's tournament so far Jude Bellingham's goal. England were one minute and 37 seconds away from exiting the Euros at the hands of Slov- uh, Slovakia. That's not going to be the first time that I get them too mixed up, by the way, just saying, uh, until that moment. So can you two tell me your emotions when that goal hit the back of the net? Just relief, I think. Um, honestly, when, when that went in... Um... I nearly ended up launching one of my dad's dogs because it was on me at the time. And yeah, nearly had a fly in shih tzu. But um, yeah, it was it was a massive relief. Um, didn't expect that long throw to kind of come to anything. Um, and then as soon as the flick on happened, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm also not used to ha- getting to celebrate a bicycle kick goal that isn't then ruled out for like a Leeds player having his head four feet down yes. or something like that. So the the fact that, you know, I've supported a team where someone's done that, I, I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. Um, but yeah, massive, massive relief because at that point I'd resigned myself to we're going out. I'd been watching the clock kind of ticking away all second half, especially after that, uh, that ruled out goal. And I was just thinking... There's no time left. Like this isn't going to happen. So yeah, massive relief on that one. Yeah, it was uh, <clears throat> pure ecstasy. I mean, the the emotions went from one extreme to another. I mean, we were the same, weren't we? D. We were resigned to England going out, and it wasn't even like we'd gone out to a a really good team or we were going out having thrown everything at the opposition. We were going out in arguably one of the most embarrassing, inept, flat dull oh, the words it could go on uh you know one of the worst ways possible really it would have th- i mean the, the 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 um i don't know what the word i'm looking for basically the fallout is what i'm thinking of the fallout would have been absolutely catastrophic and to go from that to a moment of such elation and not only a goal but a bicycle kick i mean it just doesn't get any better than that just the, going from the brink of going out to then having a chance was absolutely unbelievable. And that's what England have. You know, say what you want about our lack of tactics, our lack of strategy, whatever. One thing we will have throughout this tournament is individuals who can pull out a moment of quality like that. Um, and I don't think many nations or many players would have done that, you know, done what Jude Bellingham did in that moment. So, um, yeah, unbelievable moment. And at least we've had that because so far the tournament has been incredibly dull if you're an England fan. Oh, absolutely. I've watched that goal so many times. I've watched it in normal speed. I've watched it in slow motion. I've watched it frame by frame. I've watched it and looked at the rest of the England players and how they react. I've watched it and I've looked at the Slovakia fans behind the goal. I don't think I've watched it enough, in truth. It, like It's all that has consumed my brain since yesterday. And I kind of feel sorry for Harry Kane because obviously he got the goal that effectively you know won the game for England and yet all I can think about is that Jude Bellingham goal and him being in midair and connecting his boot to the ball for the overhead kick and I'm very like you guys I was resigned to England going out I was resigned to the failure I was kind of accepting of it and like we were so close to exiting the Euros like so so close we were teetering on the brink of an Icelandic level post-mortem. And I don't think that I can fully gauge 
the sheer level of vitriol that would have been aimed at the England players and Gareth Southgate after that game. Like Jude Bellingham has saved a national meltdown <laughs> because that, and you said it at, at Playbroom, Matt, that that was very similar to Iceland. And I guess the the fallout of losing to a nation that I think Slovakia are ranked 45th in the league, uh, in the FIFA World Rankings, I think they're definitely in the, in the 40s. Like it would have been such a catastrophic defeat and so to see him pull that out the bag I mean it, it was bedlam at Playbury wasn't it Matt everyone just losing their shit limbs everywhere but it masks a really poor performance and we will get into that now because there's plenty to say you know you can talk about Jude Bellingham's goal all you want but what what um preceded it what came before it was another really poor England performance so yeah, open floor, just let rip about that England performance again because it's it's the fourth time now that we've seen a really garbage display. I, I, I don't know what Southgate's expecting because when you play 10 of the same 11, um, you're going to get the same performance for the most part. Menu was a boost, so I'll leave that positive there, but that's as far as it goes. We continued to just be incredibly slow and dull and lacking of any creativity, it, again, was such an unbalanced and just dreadful performance. It, it just continues to absolutely bewilder me as to why this group of players are, are not performing as well as they could do individually, but also why Gareth Southgate is just almost oblivious to the issues. I mean, to keep the same 10 of the same 11 players, I don't know what he was expecting. And then to get to half time and still not make a change. We were sat there thinking, yeah, two, two or three changes at least. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a given. And we were all thinking, oh, we're going to be absolutely furious if he doesn't make a change. And then he didn't. And you, you want to just grab all of him and shake him. And Gareth, you do realise we're going out of the bloody competition here. And he's just not proactive in the slightest. You get to 60 something minutes and he finally brings on Cole Palmer. I think he made another in the 83rd minute. And then Tony, and I know Tony in hindsight ended up being a really uh, good change for us in the end, but that's only because Bellingham scored. At the time, I was thinking, why are you bringing a striker on with two minutes? Are you actually taking the piss, Gareth? <laughs> um, it, it just not, the lack of any sort of proactive, not, not only before the game of the lack of changes, but then throughout the game as well, it was just like he was stood there, clueless, just waiting for us to go out. It, it was utter resignation. And the players looked like they were just out of ideas. It was, again, awful. And if we had a get out of jail free card, we've played it. And yes. I think the bottom line is we cannot play like that again. And I know knockout football, it's all about the result. England got through, that's all that matters. And if we keep playing shit and winning by an odd goal in the last minute and we end up winning the Euros, no one's going to care. But surely this is not sustainable. Surely our luck will run out and we can't keep progressing based off of these performances. You know, we've been so lucky throughout the group. We've been so lucky again. So I, I do believe if, if if we have the same starting 11 uh, and the same sort of setup going into Switzerland, it, I think we're done. So he's got to make changes because based off of that, He's not learning and we're just waiting to be beat by a decent side. So we've absolutely got away with one there because the performance beforehand was absolutely dreadful. There's no other word for it. Oh, I thought it was a tactical masterclass, mate. Never doubted him, <laughs> even when he was replacing Schwarzer with Ross Turnbull. Never doubted him. <laughs> oh, God. But no, it, but no, it was terrible to do my best Frank Lampard meme impression there. But... Um... <laughs> It it just was not good, was it? I mean, uh, the the second half, like I say, is what stands out for me. Watching the clock ticking away, the the goal getting ruled out. I'm pretty sure I remember Kane blazing one over the bar or wide or something. And I was just, I was kind of look. Kane hit the bar, didn't he? Rice at the post. Uh, Rice did. Rice, Rice at the, at the post, post, post and. Yeah, so when that stuff was going on, I was just like, it's just written that this isn't going to come off for us. Um, and then Bellingham saved us at the end and came an extra time. But yeah, 
I, I, like I mentioned on on the last pod I was on, they've set a high bar in recent international tournaments, and they're just not living up to it. And I can, I can get you know if we're playing badly and we're going to get a, a moment of individual brilliance, but you can't rely on that every game. We need to to be playing better than this. So, you know, while while you know there was that initial kind of relief. I know you guys were kind of feeling quite elated afterwards. I, straight away after the the game, I was just kind of like, well, we're Switzerland next week and they're probably going to batter us if we play like that. So I've genuinely like been quite, I don't even want to say level head, just pessimistic after yesterday because I'm just like, we've got away with that. And if Switzerland turn up next week, they would walk all over that team. So... We really need to. I'm pretty sure I said this on the last pod as well. Book our ide- ideas up because this isn't good enough at the moment, and it, it's all well and good. The players kind of taking aim at the the media and the fans and 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 stuff like that, and you know, kind of doing it in spite of them. But the criticism is fair, and it's all coming from a good place, and that we all want them to play better. And they have been underperforming. I don't think there's any argument that they haven't been. So, yeah, they, they, they just need to get back to playing as we know they can play. And if we can do that for the last three games, I'm, I'm sure you know we'll, we'll probably have more chance of a positive outcome. However, like Matt said, if we play terrible for those three games and manage to, to nick a winner in each one, I don't think anyone's going to care. Yeah, it's a good point you bring up the players in the media because obviously there has been criticism and I agree, I think it has been fair. Surely they can't be looking at their performances, like analysing it at the time as they're moving through the game and then obviously after the match when they're watching all the clips and stuff and analysing the next opposition, surely they can see as well that they've been poor. And they kept harping on yesterday about our spirit and we've got great spirit and we've got great character and that, like that's fine. Where's the quality? Because this has been the fourth game now and they're all morphing into the same type of shit. <laughs> like we're seeing the same stuff and that's so frustrating. I, I was genuinely like quite sad by the end of the game. Like be- before Bellingham scored, I was sat there and I was like, this is it for Southgate. He has been responsible for for some of the um, the best moments that I think internationally we've had in in recent yeah. years. Um, I, I don't don't recall anyone else who has been able to provide an England team that that, that would do that. And I'm I'm sat there last night thinking, well, what's Graham Potter going to do differently? Because uh, in in me, I'm just like, yeah, it's probably going to be him that comes in. Mourinho's got a new job now, so that that ship sailed. But um, it it was, you know, saddening, and the the the, the players, like I say, the, the the need to take some responsibility for it. I can understand where Southgate's coming from, where he's trying to protect them and taking a lot of the blame and stuff. I imagine that might be again to do with like the the fitness problems that we've spoken about but I don't think I mean it, it's probably easy for me to say I've not played international football but I, I don't think you know that lack of concentration that leads to Slovakia nearly scoring from the halfway line or oh God, mis, yeah. misplacing oh, five yard passes and, and, and stuff like that I, I, I don't think that would just come down to fitness I think that is an issue with I don't know, the chemistry of the team or something. I I think you said last night, Dee, that Southgate has pretty much used up all his credit. And you could sort of say, like, if he'd have threw all five subs at it and you can say he's tried everything and the players just haven't delivered on the pitch, you can kind of excuse him a bit or if we'd gone out to an unbelievable team of players off the park. But for me, it's the fact that he, he, he... It's like he'd almost given up himself... And it's like he he was just stood there lost. Just I think he was just praying that someone would do something. And he got really, really lucky that Bellingham did what he did. And my first thought this morning when I 
<clears throat> come down from that really initial high. Now, I, I, when we were chatting last night, I mentioned that I was like drunk on football. I felt yeah. absolutely drained. Like, I couldn't think straight. It took me forever <laughs> to get to like to sleep last night. The adrenaline from the game was mad. And you only but had I, a cork. I, I only had a few corks. I know. Um, <laughs> but then, like Tom, I sort of. I, I, I went from like two extremes to the other before leveling out. I felt really sort of down and hung over about the whole thing this morning because I then thought, well, all that last night might do is make in his head somehow it will make Gareth Southgate feel like what he's done thus far is justified. Because he said in his interview post-match, I think when he was questioned on the substitute, he said, well, I had a feeling that the team out there were going to score. I had a feeling that we were going to pull something out with the players on the pitch. And I'm like, Really, Gareth? Because I don't think anyone else in the entire country could see us scoring from anywhere at that point. And I just feel like he'll go into the Switzerland game thinking, well, we're through, we got through, it's 2-1, everything's fine, he'll keep an unchanged team and he'll just keep doing what he's doing. And I think in his own head, what happened last night will, will make him feel justified that he's doing the right thing when he absolutely isn't. And that, that just makes me worry. And if anything, last night makes me more pessimistic in the fact that I feel like Southgate will just keep doing the same thing and keep making the same mistakes and refuse to change the team and not be proactive with his changes, and it will catch us out eventually. So I'd love last night to have been that kick up the arse that we desperately needed, but I still just don't think it will be. Yeah, I feel like Southgate's banking on those big players to deliver those big moments like we saw from Bellingham yesterday because you see... Julian Nagelsmann, for example, he dropped Florian Verts for their game the other day. And he's been, you know, a big player, obviously, for Bayer Leverkusen in the Bundesliga and a big player in this Germany side. But he almost sacrificed him for better team structure. And that's not something that Southgate has done himself. I feel like he's trying to shoehorn all these big players in because, of course, they're all best players. Like, if you look at the team, they're probably the best 11 players that you've got in, in this country, probably with the exception of um, of Gehi, because obviously um, Harry Maguire is out injured, and then obviously Kieran Trippier because Luke Shaw is. But it's just the same kind of performance, really, from us. And this is where I want to praise Slovakia, because their setup was essentially to negate England's build-up from the back. And Southgate said it afterwards, that they struggled to and basically respond to their press. It was their press and it was their positional play because they were cutting the passing lanes and then pressing on our central midfielders. And what that basically made England do, it, it forced us back and it forced us to pass between the defence. And when I looked at our pass map after the game, you see that horrendous U-shape where they're just passing between the defence, essentially. Kieran Tripp, you'll get it. He'll pass back to Mark Gahey, then you'll go to Stones, then you'll go to Walker, then you go back to Stones, you might go to Pickford. And this is particularly bad because there's no progression of play there. When, you've, when you're just passing it around the defence, you're not going anywhere. Slovakia would have absolutely loved that because England can't hurt them <laughs> from their own defensive third. And I noticed that Saka was coming in inside a little bit and obviously Foden does that as well. And when they do that, it basically drags the fullbacks inside too and it creates that space out wide. And we did have a couple of openings down those flanks. But the problem is, is that Kieran Trippier does not have a left foot. And also Kyle Walker had a stinker. Like defensively, we look suspect. And the reason why we look suspect, I'm sorry to say it, it was Kyle Walker. Four minutes in, he loses the ball. Slovakia counter and they flash a, a shot wide. 11 minutes in, he doesn't check his shoulder. They get in behind him, and then Mark Gay, he makes an excellent block because a shot's on at goal. And then, obviously, for the goal that they did score, it's really poor from a few players, actually, because Mark Gay, he and John Stones go for the same ball. Then I don't know what Kyle Walker's doing, but he plays the man that scores on the side. He's in no man's land in the box. And I'm just thinking... What is this team doing? What is this group of players? Like, what is the plan here? Because I'm not seeing any, like, distinct patterns of play. I'm kind of just seeing a team of well-talented players 
spluttering against opposition that they should perform against. And this isn't me saying that they should excel against Slovakia. We do not have a God-given right to do that. But based on the talent that we have, I feel like we should at least see more from them that, than we are and we're not. And a point actually on Kieran Trippier, a lot has been made about him being on that side, being uncomfortable. But actually, there were two balls that he played in the first half that were dangerous. It was that it was the Declan Rice header that from the camera angle, it looked like it was going in, but Dubravka punched it away. And then Harry Kane's header where it was deflected wide and out for a corner, where he took it on the inside, shifted it onto his right foot and delivered a ball into the box because Kieran Trippier... His cross ability is really of high quality. So I'm just wondering, can England get Kieran Trippier into those positions where he comes inside and he delivers a ball into the box at that far post on his right foot? A bit like how in the promotion of the season, I talk around because shifted Albert Adorma onto that left-hand side, obviously him being a right footer. And it actually worked for us. I think that was a, a, a you know a tactical introduction from a Karanka that pushed us onto that le- next level within our promotion season. I don't think Kieran Trippier will still be the greatest in that position, but we could just get a little bit more out of him. So to be honest, a lot of England's problems, I think, come down to left back, essentially. But anyway, I uh, I digress. Matt, Mark Gay, he he's suspended for the Switzerland game. Basically, thanks to Kieran Trippier on just selling him a pass. Um how big of a miss do you think he'll be? I think he'll be a miss. Um, I think he, there's no understating how good he's been this tournament. I mean, if there, there was to be a handful of shining lights, you could say he's definitely one of them. And he's made a couple of really crucial interceptions and blocks. Uh, you mentioned the one from, uh, I think it was uh, down that right-hand side when, when Walker was caught out and, and the cutting on the left. He made a fantastic block. But I'd like to think, and well, up until last night, defence was our most solid uh, area of our team. And if if Southgate's good at anything, I think it's setting a team up to defend. I mean, even when we went 2-1 up, you'd still want us to go on and and take the game and and you know the best the best route of uh, defense is attack get a third kill the game off it's done but you just know you won't do that that's not southgate's mentality that's why he took kane off that's why he brought concer on and we went back to that solid foundation and although we sat off we did see the game out so i have enough confidence that the defense will be okay without gear here i think concer will hopefully step in since he's had minutes and dunk hasn't i think he'll step in and do a good job there. So I think, yeah, he'll be a miss, but I still have faith in, well, the only faith I have in Southgate right now is that we'll set up defensively and that we'll be okay. And I think Konsa will hopefully be the one who comes in and, and does a job there. But saying that, we were shaky uh, in defence at the start of this game. So is there any faith with any area of this team right now? I don't know. But uh, we should be, hopefully we'll be okay without Gethe, but he has been, you know, terrific. Tom. Who do you think Southgate will put in for, for Gay? Do you think it will be Ezra Concer? I think it will be. I think it was telling that he came off the bench yesterday and, and, and no one else did. So, I mean, it's a really short answer from me here. But, yeah, I, I think <laughs> it will be Concer. That's me reasoning why. If it ends up being someone else, I'm not kind of too bothered by that because I don't really have a horse on the race here. I've said before, I don't watch a lot of Premier League football. There's no kind of preference as to to who would would replace him. Obviously, if Dilfer and Maclark were in there, I'd be supporting <laughs> them, but they're not. So, yeah, that's exactly why Maclark should have been called up. You know, that left footed centre back. You know what? I'm really gutted that Gehi is suspended because I think he's been one of my favourite players to watch uh, of England in this tournament. As I said, he made that really crucial block uh, when he basically bailed Kyle Walker out, to be honest with you. And, and yes, he was uh, he was poor in the role that he played in uh, Slovakia's goal. To be honest, it was said before the tournament that aerially he's not the strongest because he's not the tallest uh, for centre-backs. But I've really enjoyed his performances. I think he's been solid enough that Harry Maguire hasn't really got too many mentions outside of that 
maybe people think he could be good on set pieces, a bit like what you said last week, Tom. But I've I've really enjoyed Mark Gay here. You know, there was a lot of talk about a lack of Harry Maguire and who's going to step in. And there was maybe a few question marks around Mark Gay, but he's been really solid. And it was so frustrating in the way that he got that yellow card because it was so avoidable. And to be fair, the, the ref was card happy, wasn't he? I think he gave out like four yellow cards to England players within like 17 minutes or something. To be fair, I think they probably were all yellows, but it, it did seem like he was pretty card happy. Uh, but yeah, um, is there anyone from yesterday's game that you guys want to mention for praise or otherwise? I think no, not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> it would be Bellingham yeah. if anyone, but I don't think anyone really deserved it. Maybe Ivan Tony for when he came on and the 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 role he played. Um, no, I can't. I can't think of of, of too many who actually deserve it. Matt? Okay, he won the flick on, didn't he? Um, yeah. That was a that was a crucial that he say he's not the best aerially, but he won a crucial flick on. I think Saka did well just because he was dragged from pillar to post and was at left back and did a good enough job there. Yeah, and that's about it. I mean, individuals had moments, which they will because they're fantastic world class footballers. But other than that, yeah, it was another drab display. Um, not much praise really at all, fortunately. Well, is there anyone that you want to maybe spotlight that was a bit of a weak point? Because personally, I thought Carl Walker, as I said, had an absolute stinky yesterday. I think defensively, he was really poor. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think Carl Walker was a standout. Um, I think everyone else was just a little bit mediocre. Like Kane, again, doesn't quite look at it, but he got he was in the right place at the right time. I think, again, the brightest sparks come off the bench. And that's where our energy uh, and our, the life of this squad is coming from. And that's the that's where the most frustrating thing is that Southgate is not turning to that bench, not only to start games, but he's leaving it way too long in games to bring them on. So, yeah, I think uh, Trippier's uh, done OK. Ford and average, just a lot of players that are very sort of five out of ten, just very mediocre. Yeah, they're definitely playing below their talent level I will say I'm going to praise Declan Rice because I think in the second half he kind of dragged England through um, and I know obviously in terms of a team performance it wasn't great at all in that second 45 but we did have a spell obviously around that offside goal where I think we were probing and particularly after that actually we got a chance immediately after it because Dubravka gave the ball basically straight back to us from a goal kick but I think feel like Declan Rice was more involved, he was more progressive, and it was probably game state, you know, Slovakia were trying to play deep, trying to frustrate England, but I think that he really took that game by the scruff of, of, of its neck, I think. What did you think when England came back out after the break and Southgate made absolutely no changes? Obviously, Matt, I know that you, me, you and Liv were absolutely dumbfounded, we could not believe it. Gary Neville was saying at half time that not one change, not two change, but three changes and absolutely none ended up happening. So, Tom, I, I'm quite intrigued to hear your opinion on that. Uh, probably a bit surprised with my answer, but wasn't really that bothered. Um, I expected changes, but when none came, I was just kind of like not surprised, but also just kind of like, right, I hope they can play a better second half then. I um, feel like a lot of people tuned in to these podcasts are going to be disappointed that I'm not ranting and stuff like I would for Borough. <laughs> to, to be honest, I'm Borough first, England second. Like I, I just, I, I, I don't get as annoyed with England as I do with Borough. But yeah, it, it was just, it was a bit kind of amusing, I suppose. I, I expected changes, like I say. But then when, when none happened, I was just kind of like, right, it's up to the players on the pitch to prove something. I'll probably expect changes around like the 55-minute mark. It's it's not like I've not seen that sort of um, uh, strategy happen. Like this this past season for Borough, we've gone into games, especially earlier in the season, where you know we we're thinking Carrick should make, make changes at half-time, and then he hasn't, and he's done it around the 55-minute mark. So... 
that's kind of what I expected from Southgate in the scenario as well. I just didn't get it because at the beginning of well, before before a ball was even kicked in this game, he obviously made one change, which was Manu coming in for Gallagher. And even then, I thought, okay, that's that's good. You know, Kobe Manu in, in there probably gives you a little bit of that ball progression, ball carrying, decent link up play between the the edge of the box and inside the box as well, which is what we saw. But then even then, I was thinking, well, where's Palmer and where's Gordon and where's the additional two changes that I think that we need? And then seeing that first half performance and and expecting Southgate to basically, you know that meme where it's like someone with a stick saying, do something. That was what I was thinking with Southgate. And Matt, you were there with me and, and Liv at Playbury. We were literally just sat there in disbelief for about 15 minutes thinking surely he had to twist and instead he stuck I, I i can kind of see where tom's coming from in a sense with southgate because although we all expected him to make changes there is a there was a part of me that thought well it's gareth southgate of course he hasn't you know <laughs> like that lack of urgency i kind of i was sort of half expecting it as well that he wasn't gonna because i just thought that's just the that's just the frustrating part about southgate and i I'm not going to buy that he was being brave and he thought that there was going to make changes. And I think as well, another another thing he came out and said was, well, if I had took Bellingham, Bellingham off, he wouldn't have scored that overhead kick. And I'm like, well, that's, you know, he wouldn't have, like, of course, you know, is, is Michael Owen our manager? Like, he's just talking obvious <laughs> nonsense. But if he'd have switched up the team, we might have scored early. We might not have needed extra time. So I think it's just, I, th I think he knows he's been really lucky He's ridden his luck quite heavily. And uh, if I was him in that situation, to cover my own ass, I would have just done everything I could just so people couldn't say, well, at least you tried. And the fact that he wasn't even doing that, I thought he, he's almost opening himself up to just an unbelievable amount of criticism and just fall out. It would have been disastrous. So I cannot, cannot quite put into words how lucky... He, he would have been hung up in Trafalgar Square. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So I kind of half expected it, but he's a very lucky man. But uh, how many lives has he got left? Because I, I think, as, as we know, if it if happens again, it, yeah, this time next week, I think we might be on our way home. I just want to say two praise Gareth Southgate here. He's won more knockout games in major tournaments than every other England manager since 1966 combined so he's got the balls when it comes to delivering results in knockout competitions but there was a change that he made and it was Ivan Tony on right at the end and I was thinking what the hell is the point like honest to god just the poor guy like putting him on with like what a blink to go but to be fair Ivan Tony he was effective he made an impact and if you watch Jude Bellium's goal you can see at the front post Ivan Tony pins one of their defenders and that opens up the space for Jude Bellingham. They said that they'd worked on that long throw in the build-up to this game and obviously it paid dividends, so credit to Southgate, the players and the coaching staff for that. And France have just scored in their game and now I'm distracted. But with that, I think Tony's very good at those set pieces I think he's a very good player in being able to pin centre halves winning his duels and obviously he got the flick on for the winner and I love that goal actually because Eberichi Eze miss kicks it and it's the best miss kick since Adam Clayton nearly took Albert Adorma's head off against Reading in 2016 and obviously Ivan Tony heads it back into the danger area and Harry Kane cannot miss that and I think that when you put on a player with such little time left you want them to deliver in that time that they have and to be fair Ivan Tony did. I'm not going to sit here and say that he should start the next game but it's good to know that when we've got uh, when we are playing in a game where we need somebody like Ivan Tony to to hassle and Harry in the box uh, and be that box presence that we've got that player there. And, and uh, to be fair, I feel like in the cameos that both Watkins and Tony have had in this competition, which is, you know, fleeting minutes, let's be honest, it's almost been vindicated to a degree why Southgate brought them both. So uh, very good for from Tony there as well. Tom... Ha, how are you feeling for the Switzerland game? You've been very down on England and, and it's completely understandable, but we are in the quarterfinals, so I'm interested to hear how you're feeling for that one. 
kind of not feeling anything really. Nothing to smile about <laughs> in my life then. But <laughs> um, come I, on, Tom. I, I, just, I, I feel like not I've, optimistic, Tom here. No, I've I've been let down far too many times by England and well, especially by Borough over my lifetime. So just I kind of go into I'm I'm going into this not expecting anything. I'm expecting to get beat off Switzerland. Anything else will be an absolute bonus. Um, but yeah, I just I, I don't see anything to be optimistic about from the way that we played this tournament. Whereas you know Switzerland have been playing well, so yeah, who, who knows what uh, what what they're going to be like next next Saturday? But yeah, I'm I'm just I'm not expecting anything from us. This has to be the catalyst now. It absolutely has to be the catalyst. I think obviously England were on the very very brink of going out, and this should be a, a massive slap in the face, a massive kick up the ass that these players have long needed in this tournament because they've been skating by and they've not been performing. And people can say, yeah, well, we've won these games, and you know we got through the group and we're through at the quarterfinals, but that's outcome bias. And if that's the me- mentality that you that you have, and if that's your approach, then fine. But obviously we have to podcast. Well, we don't have to podcast about these games, but we are podcasting about these games. So we have to kind of take everything as we see it. And simply put, England have been really poor in this tournament. That's four games now that have basically just been the same, below par. So I'm hoping that that Jude Bellingham moment, that Harry Kane goal is not for nothing and that it can basically be, as I said, the catalyst for improvement because, yeah, we we got lucky, massively so, and I, I don't think we'll get as lucky again. But, Matt, what do you think about the Switzerland game? How are you feeling? Well, if things stay as they are, I'm exactly the same as Tom. Uh, I think there's cat and chance that we'll get through, to be honest. Um as you say, it should be the catalyst. All teams want when they're playing bad is a moment, a last-minute winner. You see it at club level. You see it just in football. What that can do to a team can be quite something, especially when we literally only need three games to, to win the tournament. I know that sounds really easy, but it, this team just has to hit some form of, well, form. You know, We've, we've gotten this far <laughs> by playing absolutely shit. We've... We've topped our group somehow and we're into the quarterfinals. So surely if this team just goes up a few gears, we'll have a chance. And he's got all the tools at his disposal. There's other big nations misfiring completely in the tournament. I don't think it's outlandish to say that this is a huge opportunity and maybe the biggest. And with with it in Southgate's last tournament... You'd like to think surely he would he would do anything and anything he possibly could to get this team as far as he could in his last tournament, given the, the players at his disposal. I mean, some managers would would die to have the players he has in that squad. But it just I just don't get why he won't change it, why he won't give others a try. It's every player that's come off the bench has proven to be a positive for the team. You know, Eze had him, even though he miscued the shot completely. If he didn't take that on, if Tony didn't flick it on, you know, you could say the same for for Gordon's cameo. You could say the same for, for for Palmer. Every player who's come on has made an impact, and yet he just will not use them. He has to grow some balls, be brave, drop maybe one or two individuals who might be, yeah, they might be a better individual uh, in their own right, but they they're, they're not. It's it's not the best team. So if he if he has the balls and he changes things up. I still have faith that that we might start clicking because it, it it won't take much to get this team going. But if he keeps playing ten of the same eleven and we just keep going around in this same cycle, we're going to get knocked out, and there's going to be no one else left to blame. I know I know individuals have not been good enough, but Southgate has all of the all of the pieces of the jigsaw there. He's just not putting the pieces together, and it could be a huge missed opportunity if he doesn't. So if things stay as they are, we're going to go out undoubtedly. Um, I just hope, like the other 60 million people in this bloody country, he sees that he has to make changes. But I just don't think he will. I just don't think he will. And for that reason, I think, I think, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see us go out, go out next weekend. Score predictions, then. <sighs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> don't know, Tom. What do you think? 
two nil Switzerland. Oof. Tommy, you Scottish? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he's Welsh. Uh, uh, I think two one Switzerland. I think I think we'll we might get a consolation goal at the end when we're forced to make changes and actually bring attackers on or forward thinking players on, but the game might be out of our reach by that point. I, I hope I'm wrong, but have no faith in Southgate whatsoever. Well, I am going to have faith just because I've everyone's well you t you guys have predicted a, a switzerland win so just for the interest of something different <laughs> i'm gonna say that we will win it'll be exactly what i said for the slovakia game actually one nil harry kane penalty the most boring game you'll ever see in your life but we'll get through and fingers crossed we click but that is it for this episode if you've listened to this podcast or watched it on youtube please make sure to give us feedback drop us a like and a comment as well get involved with all of the opinion until then on to the quarterfinals come on england